Hi, so in today's capsule, we are going to now introduce the Fourier transform. We are going to extend the definition of Fourier transform to all tempered distributions. Remember, the class of tempered distributions is quite huge. Any LP function is a tempered distribution. Functions which grow like a polynomial, they are tempered distributions. Things which are not functions, Dirac delta, derivatives of Dirac delta, they are also tempered distributions. So the class of entities for which the Fourier transform is defined has suddenly become pretty huge. And this is possible because of these duality results. So before we take up the de uh, definition of Fourier transform of a tempered distribution, we proved a little lemma last time. Let us recall what this lemma says. Look at the slide, theorem 112. If f and g are in the Schwarz space S of R, then f hat g pairing is the same as f g hat pairing. That is a straightforward application of Fibini's theorem. The proof simply writes itself out. Now f and g were in the Schwarz space. Now look at equation 10.8. Now what we are going to do is that we are going to take the right hand side as the definition. Now what if f is not in the Schwarz space? What if f happens to be in S prime of r? What if f happens to be a tempered distribution? The right hand side of 10.8 would make perfect sense. Why? Because f is a tempered distribution and G was in the Schwarz class. So G hat is also in the Schwarz class. So U, triangular bracket U with G hat makes perfect sense. So let us now get to the formal definition of the Fourier transform of a tempered distribution. Suppose U is a tempered distribution, then the map G going to triangular bracket U G hat is a tempered distribution where G varies over the Schwarz class. The tempered distribution given by 10.9 is denoted by U hat and is called the Fourier transform of U. So because we are denoting it by U hat, what does 10.9 read? U hat paired with G is the same as U paired with G hat. Left hand side is the object that we are trying to define, right hand side is the definition. We have to check that 10.9 is a tempered distribution. That means that we have to check that the map 10.9 is continuous. And this will follow from the previous result that the Fourier transform is continuous as an operator from SR to SR. Okay, so if GN is a sequence in SR converging to G, then GN hat will converge to G hat. G n converges to G in a very strong sense S of R. So G n hat will converge to G hat in a very strong sense again in S of R. But U, our original tempered distribution was continuous from S R to the scalars. So U paired with G n hat will converge to U paired with G hat by continuity. So we conclude from this that if G n converges to G, the pairing U G n hat converges to U G hat proving the sequential continuity of 10.9. So 10.9 does define a tempered distribution. So let us calculate some tempered distribution. The most basic example is you take a function which is in L1 of R. So because U is in L1 of R, in chapter 4, we defined the Fourier transform of U directly as an integral and we got a function which is in L infinity. Now will that function represent the same distribution as the one that we are defined now? U is in L1, so U is a distribution. So we have the Fourier transform of U as a distribution and we have the Fourier transform of U as an L infinity function. Do these two things match? Is there a consistency in the definition? There had better be a consistency in the definition in order for the theory to go through. So what is the distributional meaning of U hat? The distributional meaning of U hat is that U hat is a distribution G maps to the pairing U G hat. 
but u is in l1 remember u is in l1 so what is this pairing u g hat it is simply the integral u y g hat y dy put the definition of g hat because g hat is a nice function so the fourier transform of g hat is a simply given by an integral gx e to the power minus ixy dx now a simple application of fubini will enable you to switch the order of the integration so this right hand side now simplifies to integral over r gx dx integral over r uy e to the power minus ixy dy this inside integral is been called capital u this inside integral is being called capital u capital u is fourier transform of u in the classical sense capital u is the fourier transform of u in the classical sense the fourier transform of u in the classical sense agrees with the fourier transform of u in the sense of distributing was what is the rhs again u paired with g hat is by same as u hat paired with g so u hat paired with g is the same as capital u paired with g so u hat and capital u they describe the same distribution the same generalized function and so the definition is certainly consistent so we establish the consistency of the two definitions now let us take up the dirac delta the dirac delta is a favorite distribution what is its fourier transform what's the definition of fourier transform delta hat paired with g is by definition delta paired with g hat but what is delta paired with g hat it is g hat evaluated at the origin but what is the fourier transform evaluated at the origin it is simply integral gx dx but what is integral gx dx it is one paired with g the distribution one the l infinity function one when regarded as a distribution is exactly this and the l infinity function one regarded as a distribution is simply one paired with g so delta not hat paired with g is one paired with g so delta not hat equal to one that's an important conclusion that the fourier transform of the dirac delta is a constant function one now what does the fourier inversion theorem say if f is in the schwarz class then f hat hat is simply 2 pi times f of minus x there is a reflection remember when you take the fourier transform twice the fourier transform is not a period 2 map it is a period 4 map you must remember that so when you take the fourier transform twice there is going to be an inversion in sign okay so if the inversion theorem were to hold for tempered distributions also then i'll apply one more hat to this equation and i will get one hat equal to delta not hat hat and delta not hat hat is supposed to be 2 pi times delta not at minus x but since the dirac delta is at the origin the inversion in sign doesn't matter so if the inversion theorem were to hold then we will get that the fourier transform of 1 is 2 pi times delta not but we are not proved the inversion theorem yet we are going to do it later so this equation 10.10 should now be established from first principles namely we must use a definition of fourier transform so one hat applied to g is by definition one applying to g hat one applying to g hat is simply integral g hat y dy over the real numbers how do i evaluate this integral you have to use the e to the power minus epsilon y square trick so write this as limit as epsilon goes to 0 outside integral g hat y e to the power minus epsilon y square first step second step put the definition of g hat as an integral you'll get a two integrals switch the order of integration and finish the job you have to use the dominated convergence theorem and you will land up with integral of e to the power minus z square dz over the real line which is root pi that calculation will come in and you will get the final answer to be 2 pi times g0 and we would have verified 10.10 that's a second example on fourier transform calculation more examples on fourier transform calculation what is the fourier transform of e to the power ix 
What is the Fourier transform of cos x? What is the Fourier transform of sin x? After all, cos x is e to the power i x plus e to the power minus i x upon 2. So, if you calculate the Fourier transform of e to the power minus i x a, where a is real, when a is real, that is a L infinity function. So, it is a tempered distribution. So, if you can calculate the Fourier transform of this, then you can calculate the Fourier transform of sin x and cos x. How do you calculate the Fourier transform of this? Apply the definition, call this u, call this object u, u hat paired with g is the same as u paired with g hat. u paired with g hat means integral u of x g hat x dx. u of x is e to the power minus i x a. And now you have to put the definition of g hat as an integral and you switch the order of integration. But before you do that, make sure to throw in the e to the power minus epsilon y squared use the e to the power minus epsilon y square trick to do the job and you will get the Fourier transform. Use the e to the power minus epsilon y square trick to compute the Fourier transform of the signum function. What is the signum function? This x upon mod x if you like. So compute the Fourier transform of the signum function. The signum function is hx minus h of minus x where h is the heavy side function. So, you can use the heavy side function to create the signum function and I want you to calculate the Fourier transform of the signum function. So, de denote the signum function by u, namely hx minus h of minus x, you call it u and use a definition of the Fourier transform, namely u hat paired with g is simply u paired with g hat. u paired with g hat means you will, it's an integral. It's an integral over 0 infinity and an integral over minus infinity 0. The two integrals will combine to give you one integral after a change of variables. And so u hat is given by the prescription g maps to integral 0 to infinity g hat chi minus g hat of minus chi d chi. Now you need to evaluate this integral. Again throw in the e to the power minus epsilon chi squared and then perform the switching of the integration and you finish the job. It is an extremely important calculation and please do this and as it is going to be very useful, it is going to be, it is going to teach us many things. Now in chapter 4, we have seen that the Fourier transform exchanges differentiation and multiplication by the coordinate variable or to use a physicist's lingo, the momentum and the, and the position operators are dual operators with respect to the Fourier transform. It converts the momentum operator into the position operator and vice versa. Of course, there is a minus sign floating around and you must do the bookkeeping carefully. Now, the question is will that formula carry over to tempered distributions? Remember, if I have a tempered distribution, I can differentiate. So, 1 upon i d d x can be applied to a tempered distribution. If I have a tempered distribution, I can multiply it by a polynomial. In particular, I can multiply it by a coordinate variable. So, what is the story? It is summarized as theorem 114. Suppose u is a tempered distribution, then as distributions, we have the following equalities. The You take the distribution, you differentiate, throw in the i and then take the Fourier transform. That is the same as first taking the Fourier transform and multiplying by the coordinate variable. That is the first identity. The second identity says that take the tempered distribution, multiply by the polynomial x and then take the Fourier transform. That is the same as taking the Fourier transform first and then applying the 1 upon i d d x except that here you will find a minus sign. So, you have to prove these two results. The proofs are very routine and they follow immediately from the definition of Fourier transform of a tempered distribution. And of course, we will have to use this corresponding formulas for the Schwarz class that we established in chapter 4. So, we have to use those formulas in chapter 4 to derive these formulas. Let us do the first one and I will leave the second one as an exercise to the audience. So, pick an element in the Schwarz class S of R. It is a rapidly decreasing function and I want to calculate 1 upon i d d x u hat applied to g. By definition, it is just put the hat on the other side and take 1 upon i d d x u applied to g hat. And now push the derivative on the other side. How do I differentiate a distribution? You simply throw the derivative on the other side and put a minus sign. So it is 
u paired with minus 1 upon i d d x g hat. But use the formula in chapter 4. G is in the Schwarz class. It's rapidly decreasing. So minus 1 upon i d d x applied to g hat is the same as multiplying g by chi and then taking the Fourier transform. So, so far we have come here. But now again apply the definition of the Fourier transform of a temporal distribution. So, put the hat on the other factor u hat. So, it will be u hat paired with chi g. But how do I pair u hat with chi g? It is the same as chi u hat paired with g. Remember the rule for multiplying a distribution of the polynomial. Simply you can put the polynomial over here on the other side and you can take it from the other side on the left hand side whichever way. So here we first put the hat on u by the definition of the Fourier transform and put the polynomial chi on the left hand side and you get this. So we see that 1 upon i d d x u hat paired with g is the same as chi u hat paired with g. In other words 1 upon i d d x u hat is the same as chi times u hat and the other equation 10.12 is proved in exactly the same way. There is no change, only changes are cosmetic. Now we have ready to prove the inversion theorem. So let us now state and the, prove the inversion theorem precisely. Suppose I take a tempered distribution u and I take a Schwarz function g. I want to understand what is u hat hat. What is this tempered distribution u hat and u is a tempered distribution, u hat is a tempered distribution. Again, again take its Fourier transform and I can ask what is u hat hat. u hat hat is the same as u except for the switch in the sign. So what do I mean by switching the sign in a distribution? What exactly is the definition of that? And that is clarified by theorem 115. Suppose u is a distribution and g is a Schwarz function, then u hat hat is a tempered distribution. How does it act on g? The way it acts on g is 2 pi times u acting on the reflected function g of minus x. So this is the avatar of the Fourier inversion theorem for distributions. So the same thing carries over for tempered distributions also. So let us look at the left hand side. The left hand side is u hat hat paired with g. That will be first put the hat on the other side. So it will be u hat paired with g hat. Put the hat again on the right hand side. It will be u paired with g hat hat. But g is in the Schwarz class. So we are back to chapter 4. So g hat hat as per chapter 4 is 2 pi times g of minus x. The 2 pi being a scalar comes out innocently. So it will be u paired with g of minus x and that's the right hand side and we have finished proving the theorem. As an immediate corollary, we get a very important result. Suppose I give you an L1 function. Suppose I give you an L1 function. You know that the Fourier transform is in L infinity. The Fourier transform may not be in L1. Example take the characteristic function of minus 1 1. Take the characteristic function of minus 1 1. That's certainly in L1. Take its Fourier transform. What is the Fourier transform? 2 times sin chi by chi. Sin chi by chi is not in L1. So the Fourier transform of an L1 function may not be in L1. But now I'm giving you more hypothesis. I am telling you that u is in L1 and u hat is also in L1. Under this additional hypothesis, I can take u hat hat. This u hat hat is going to be 2 pi times u of minus x. How do I prove this? So from this theorem 115, we immediately conclude that if u is in L1 and u hat is in L1, then u hat hat is simply 2 pi times u of the reflected variable. And that completes the theorem on Fourier inversion. Now, so far we've been talking about tempered distributions of one variable. What happens about tempered distributions in several variables? Go back to chapter 4. In chapter 4, we developed the Schwarz class S of R in one variable for notational simplicity. And at the end, we simply indicated how to discuss Schwarz class in several variables. And we even talked about radial uh, functions and their Fourier transform is also radial and all those things we proved in chapter 4. Here again, we have been confining ourselves to the one variable case 
for notational simplicity, how do I discuss the tempered distributions in several variables? Well, we should start with a Schwarz space in several variables, S of Rn. And I have to put a topology in the Schwarz space exactly as we did earlier. Only thing is that now instead of K and L, we'll have to take multi-indices. I'll have to take a multi-index alpha, which is alpha 1, alpha 2, alpha n. And I, I want to differentiate with respect to x1, x2, xn corresponding to this multi-index. So del del x1, alpha 1 times, del del x2, alpha 2 times, del del, del, del xn, alpha n times. So that's the kind of a mixed partial derivative that we need to take. So when does a sequence f nu converge to f in the Schwarz space? You take the difference and you take the alpha the derivative where alpha is a specified multi-index and you multiply it by any polynomial whatsoever qx. You can take a monomial if you like x to the power beta but doesn't matter you can take a polynomial as an equivalent definition. So supremum over rn and that must go to 0 for every choice of multi-index alpha and for every choice of polynomial qx. If this happens, then we say that f nu converges to f in the Schwarz class. As it happens in the one variable case, in the several variables also, S of Rn is a complete metric space. And this notion of convergence arises from a complete metric. As in the one variable case, this is not going to be a normable space. As in the one variable case, it is going to be a locally convex topological vector space and hence the dual space, which is a rich space, S prime of Rn is a space of tempered distributions in several variables. In other words, a tempered distribution in several variables is simply a continuous linear map from S of Rn to a scalars. So it's a linear transformation with the target space as scalars and this linear transformation should be continuous. So there are no new ideas, there are just cosmetic changes in passing from one variable to several variables as far as the definitions are concerned. The same thing is true for Fourier transform. To define the Fourier transform, you simply use the same prescription as before, U is a tempered distribution and U hat is its Fourier transform. I have to tell you what U hat does to G. So the pairing of u hat with g is simply u paired with g hat. This prescription g maps to u paired with g hat is a continuous map from S of Rn to the scalars. So this also defines a tempered distribution. The support of a tempered distribution of several variables is ex defined exactly as in the one variable case. It is the smallest closed set outside which the distribution is 0. And I leave it to you to formulate precisely the definition of a support. Just the same thing simply carries forward verbatim. So now the theorem on point supports. Theorem 117. A tempered distribution whose support is a single point origin. What kind of distribution is it? Of course the Dirac delta will be supported at the origin the derivatives of the Dirac delta. Now the derivatives are multidimensional derivatives. Del del x1 to the power alpha 1, del del x2 to the power alpha 2, del del, del, del xn to the power alpha n. That kind of differentiation you have to take on the Dirac delta. They, those will also have point support, namely the origin. And their finite linear combinations will have point support. The converse is true and that is theorem 117. Suppose if u is a tempered distribution whose support is a single point, namely the origin, then this distribution is a linear combination of finitely many derivatives of Dirac delta. So namely u equals summation C alpha delta naught to the power alpha mod alpha less than or equal to 1. There are finitely many derivatives of Dirac delta and its linear combination. So this theorem is extremely important. We are not proved this for one variable case. We are, not we are not going to prove it for several variables also. In the next capsule, we are going to give a nice application of theorem 117 to prove Liouville's theorem, which is a generalization of the Liouville's theorem for complex analysis. 
in, in elementary complex analysis, you proved a Liouville's theorem. We are going to generalize it to harmonic functions, but we are going to use distribution theory to dispose of the proof quickly and efficiently. I think this will be a very good place to st stop this capsule. We'll continue this next time. Thank you very much.